Are you interested in easing patient's pain before, during, and after a surgical operation? If you are, you might be interested in becoming an anesthesiologist. In this video, we're going to help you answer the question, should you become an anesthesiologist in 2021? We're going to go over the latest salaries, job market statistics, and the latest trends. Coming up. Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where we help you with your career search. If you end up enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. And if you're an anesthesiologist, let us know in the comments below what you enjoy and what you dislike about the occupation. Anesthesiologists have several roles and responsibilities. Anesthesiologists monitor patients before, during, and after anesthesia. They help provide and maintain life support and airway management to help patients prepare for surgery. During medical procedures, they administer anesthetic or sedation. Before any medical procedures, they often obtain medical histories and use diagnostic tests to determine risks during surgery. Anesthesiologists position patients on operating tables to maximize patient comfort. And just like any other physician, they order laboratory tests, x-ray, and other diagnostic procedures before surgery. These are just a couple roles and responsibilities of anesthesiologists. Next, we're gonna get into salaries. How much do anesthesiologists tend to make? The first source of data that we're gonna use is Medscape's Physician Compensation Report in 2020. The 2021 version isn't out quite yet. This compensation report looks at total compensation. So it actually includes base salaries, benefits, medical care, equity, overtime, pretty much any other benefit you could think of. Everything is added up to give you or to give people an idea of total compensation for all of these different physicians. According to Medscape's physician compensation report in 2020, the average compensation for an anesthesiologist was $398,000. This sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but there are other physician and surgeons that tend to earn more. In the report, the highest paying specialty was orthopedics, where total compensation was a staggering $511,000. Per year. Second highest was plastic surgery at 479,000. Then there's ear, nose, throat doctors, cardiologists, radiology. And as you go farther down the list, you get to anesthesiologists. So that's the first set of data for anesthesiologists. What happens if you remove all those benefits, equity, healthcare, and other benefits? We can actually use the Bureau of Labor Statistics data to give us an estimate of the base salaries of anesthesiologists and look at their incomes over time. In 1909, the average base salary for an anesthesiologist was $123,780. This rose to $261,730 in 2019. This gives us a total wage growth of $137,950 or around $6,600 per year of yearly wage growth. Very, very few occupations are seeing this level of wage growth. And if you were to apply this yearly wage growth into the future, in 2021, the average base salary of anesthesiologists would be around 275,000 per year. And by 2029, this average base salary would rise to $327,420 per year. Geography plays a role in the compensation of anesthesiologists, but it's, it's not what you would think. You would think that the highest paying places for anesthesiologists would be in New York City, San Francisco, but the data definitely doesn't play out that way. In fact, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the state of Arizona actually had the highest average base salary for anesthesiologists with $280,030 as the average base salary. Other high paying states for this occupation include Oklahoma, New Mexico, Kansas, North Carolina, Alabama, and the state of Indiana. So hardly coastal cities, which is kind of interesting because with many other occupations, the highest paying places in the country are usually on the coasts or in high cost cities. So that covers the compensation of anesthesiologists. Next up, what is the job market like? Is it challenging to get a job? Is it super saturated? Anesthesiologists actually, they have to go to med school before they can begin practicing. And med schools only let in a certain number of people. But first we'll look at the number of employed anesthesiologists over time. In 1999, there was 25,910 employed anesthesiologists. This rose to 37,450 employed in 2009 and since then it's been declining in 2019 there was 31,010 employed anesthesiologists across the country what's interesting is the government is actually projecting no job growth for anesthesiologists to 2029 if you were to use history and follow the historical trend there would be about 33,400 employed anesthesiologists in 2029 
but the government is anticipating very little to no job growth. Now that we have the number of employed anesthesiologists across the country, we can actually compare it to the number of job postings. And this can indicate if there's a shortage, if there's oversaturation. And to do this, we use Indeed.com. Indeed actually pulls in job postings from many different sources. I used two different keywords to search for job postings for anesthesiologists. I used anesthesiologist and staff anesthetist. This gave me 621 job postings across the country. When we compare the number of job postings against the number of employed, actually there really isn't a shortage of anesthesiologists. Usually people tend to assume there's always a shortage of doctors, physicians, dentists, and usually that's the case. But for some reason with anesthesiologists, there doesn't seem to be the level of demand that there is for dentists, general dentists, oral surgeons, and some of the other physicians that I've looked at. So that's definitely kind of interesting. Maybe there's a lot of self-employed anesthesiologists. I'm not entirely sure. If you know the answer to this, definitely let me know in the comments below. So that covers the job market and the compensation of anesthesiologists. The next question is, would this occupation be compatible with your personality and interests? To determine if this occupation would be compatible with your interests, definitely look into taking a free RIASEC assessment online. There's quite a few free ones out on the internet. After you do one of these, you get scores in six different themes, and then you can compare these scores against people in many different occupations. When anesthesiologists tend to take a RIASEC assessment, they tend to score high in the investigative, realistic, and social themes. These codes are very common among physicians and actually engineers. In fact, many physicians tend to score high in the investigative, realistic, and social themes. People that score high in the investigative theme tend to be curious, thoughtful, and analytical, whereas people that score higher in the realistic theme, they tend to like working with their hands. And then people that score high in the social theme tend to really enjoy helping other people. So you combine these three different interests together, and it's no surprise that people that score high in these three tend to gravitate towards becoming physicians. As far as the most likely Myers-Briggs type to become an anesthesiologist, it is the INFJ, which is actually the rarest type. This type is also known as the advocate. The second most likely type to become an anesthesiologist would be the ISTJ, the inspector, third ENTJ, the commander, and fourth INTJ, which is the architect. So when we look at wages, geography, interest, personality, all those things can be used to help determine if this occupation would be for you. Another thing to keep in mind is there's actually even more interesting things from the physician compensation report from 2020. In the physician compensation report, they found that 75% of anesthesiologists would choose to be a physician again, given a choice. Based off this diagram, physicians that work in infectious diseases had the highest score of 84% of them would choose to be to work in medicine once again. Medscape also found that 89% of anesthesiologists would choose the same specialty once again, which was pretty high compared to other physicians. It's not the highest. The highest was actually found to be, I, th I think, oncology and orthopedics. Those physicians were scoring in the 90s for physicians that would choose to the same specialty once again. So as you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming an anesthesiologist in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out my plastic surgeon video. I've covered a couple different physician occupations and physician specialties. As you can see, anesthesiologists do extremely well. They make a lot of money per year. I was very surprised about the job market. I thought that there would be less, more job postings and less employed. I thought the ratio would be a little bit more favorable. That was very surprising to me. If you have any comments about this video, definitely leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.